and then there was three of those solar charge controllers I mean so this is the third one if you don't know this is the 24 volt which is the big one showing the stuff over there now under here is the 12 volt charge controller which I don't have the panel now because I sold it yesterday and I also sold the um, my uh, wind generator because I got the new one but it's still in my basement and I have to bring it here next week but yeah so this one is for 48 volts so now I got my uh, my four batteries which are under there and here I got these them are configured in 48 volts these are the magic switches for them so because I cannot ch charge charge them when they are in 48 volts because this only do does 24 volts so I bought this during the winter and yesterday I got it attached here and I made this switch over here, which turns the um, the wire coming from the panels goes over there, comes here. So with this switch, I can determine uh, which controller the power from the panels comes. So now it's in here. You can see the blinking lights and. Well, the battery is full, so it's just, yeah. But now, when I turn this on the middle, chip, this should turn off. No, it doesn't turn off, but it, yeah. You can see the, uh, yeah, those goes down, the voltage from the panels. And then, when I turn it here, and also this light comes off. And when I put this on, this one wakes up. And this had a lot of uh, configurations to do, which I didn't enjoy because they're in bad English, you know, stuff from China. Because I had to input the voltage from the panels. I don't know why do you have to put that, because it, you can read it over there. And then you have to put the other uh, voltage that you want to charge the batteries, the maximum voltage, which is kind of weird also. This does that automatically. They have, yeah. I haven't configured these uh, almost at all. Then you can put the um, the battery amp hours, which is good. Then it knows how big the batteries are. And yeah, there was stuff there. Yeah, it wasn't that simple. But yeah, I think it works. Now it puts like 3 amps over there, about. I think they are pretty full also, so that's why it doesn't charge them. I'm not sure what is the thing over here, but it says the panels are 57 volts. Once I put it back in here, you can see clearly that the voltage is higher. It's 72 here. So I'm not sure what well. It blinks like 73 when you put it on, but then it drops to 57. Not sure what happened over there, but yeah, I think I'll figure it out someday. Yeah, and also yeah, and I'm gonna show you the the meters that I got for the battery. So this one over here, I hope you can see it. This shows the um, the voltage and the amps going to the motor. With this, I just sometimes I want to know how many amps is going to the motor because it's rated for 100 amps, and I don't like to go over that because the controller can output 300 amps for a short period of time. So I don't want to go over the 100 amps for a longer time. And because the amps that the controller draws from the batteries are usually a lot less than 
what it outputs to the motor. So here you can see the uh, it's clear. This is kind of tricky. This display because sometimes it shows a lot of numbers, a lot of amps, and what's being used, even though the motor is not on. And sometimes it shows a lot less than is used. So but now it works. So is the. Uh, the volts, the amps, and the uh, the power in watts. So let's do a test. I'm gonna go forward. I'm gonna go slowly because the lines are gonna start creaking. Let's put like a 30 amps, 32 amps from the motor. And you can see over here that it puts 80 amps. 80 amps is going to the battery at 18 volts. So yeah. This seems to be working. I calibrated this, it shows some yeah, small numbers, but it doesn't work. So that's about that. And I also noticed that once you put the full throttle on, the volts to the motor doesn't go much higher than 20 something even though it's now the battery sign 48 volts I'm not sure what's happening over there but when I try to measure the volts going to the motor with this I can't get a good reading at all so I think there might be some kind of a wavery thing going on with the volts so the controller might put some you know burst of volts over there and the reader and the meter won't read it correctly I'm not sure I'm I don't know that much about electricity so something weird going on but I can hear that it's putting much more power if you compare it to the 24 volts uh, configuration when I put the full throttle on it's gonna I'll put a like 20 something volts over there and the amps might be the same like uh, 80 amps but the speed is not that much that it's in 40 volts so something some weird stuff happening over there but I don't care about the volts going to the motor I only care about the amps but it would be nice to know how many volts is it putting because the volts are you know doing the the uh, RPM, they are affecting the RPM and the uh, amps are uh, affecting the torque, so... But yeah, I think this was about it. Next week I'm gonna continue doing... Hey, yeah, I'm gonna put the, uh, the wind generator, the new wind generator on. Because I had the pole over here, the cabin, and it's, yeah, it's on the way. And it's gonna support the uh, the panels also better. And then I'm gonna get the wa those wires going to the uh, the throttle handle thing. I can get those inside the hole so that they don't hang around. Them. So thanks again for watching and put the thumbs up down, subscribe, and go to the Patreon page if you like. Catch you on the next one. Bye bye.